Last week, I unboxed perhaps what might be the most excited and highly anticipated ultra portable of 2020. Yes, of course, I'm talking about the HP NV X360. It's running the AMD Ryzen 5 processor with integrated Radeon graphics. And I gotta say, the performance has really surpassed my expectations. I'm really impressed with what this can do. Now, as far as the battery life, it's all looking good. Everything good with the all metal design, 13.3 inch display, which is gorgeous, and everything you'd want in a two-in-one convertible. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP NVX 360 with the AMD Ryzen 5 processor, all new for 2020. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms that I post all the latest updates. Now in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit is on loan from HP and once this review is done, I'll I'll be sending it back. Now this comes in three different SKUs. You can get it with the Ryzen 3, the Ryzen 5, or the Ryzen 7. Now my review unit is the Ryzen 5. It's the 4500U, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it also has 256 gigs of SSD storage. And you can pick that one up for $819.99. Now you can step up to the Ryzen 7 4700U with 8 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigs of SSD storage, and that comes in at $1,099 and 99 cents over at HP. You could also get it with the Ryzen 3. That's the one I would probably stay away from. And I think these are really good deals, especially for the price to performance value. I'll put the latest pricing in the link below and where you can buy it. Now I've seen it as low as $749 over at Costco, and that will net you that Ryzen 7 with eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigs of SSD storage. I'm not sure how long Costco will have it at that price, but it's worth a check to check out their website. Now, one of the reasons I really like it is its premium all metal build at 2.92 pounds or 1.33 kilograms. This is a really premium device. It feels premium, not too heavy, not too light. I think it's just right. I went over the ports in my unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, on the left side is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a drop draw for USB-A port, and a USB-C port that does data charge and display out. So you can charge with this, despite the fact that this comes with a barrel pin connector. Now moving over to the right side, you get a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, a second USB-A port, and your power port for that barrel pin connector, AC adapter. And as I previously mentioned in that unboxing video, Video. No Thunderbolt 3 here for the Ryzen processors. We're waiting for USB 4.0, which will have pretty much the same technology. Now, as far as design is concerned, they went with a minimalist approach, which I absolutely love. And I also like the color. It's Nightfall Black, and I think it looks really good. And here it is next to the Spectre X360, late 2019. It's an excellent device in its own right, but some people may not like the gem cut design and may want to get something a little bit more traditional like you get with the NV X360. And as you can clearly see, they both have a very similar footprint in terms of size. Now, one thing they both have in common is the fact that they both have a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. And here it is next to the Dell XPS 13 9300. Once again, very similar in terms of the footprint, in terms of the size. But one key difference is that the NVX360 has a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, whereas the Dell XPS 13 has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It has a 13.3 inch display versus a 13.4 inch display. And speaking of the display, it is really good. In fact, I would say it's excellent. What we're looking at here is a 13.3 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And as I mentioned, that's a 16 to nine aspect ratio, really deep blacks, really vibrant colors, really good contrast, accurate colors. And it also gets pretty bright coming in at 435 nits. And that's above the 400 nits claimed by HP. I like to see that. Now it is a somewhat glossy display, not overly glossy. So 
so that's good so in direct sunlight not too many issues especially because it does get bright enough for outdoor use now as far as the coverage of the color gamut 96 percent srgb so that's pretty good this will be a good choice for creative professionals they want to do photoshop lightroom and of course video editing this is a decent choice and i love the fact that they went from a 79 percent screen to body ratio from last year to 88 percent screen to body ratio this year slimming down those bezels giving off a really sleek and modern look that's looking good so this is the front facing camera on the hp nv x360 13 inch two-in-one convertible really thin light really like the premium all metal build uh really impressive stuff with that amd ryzen 5 now this is a 720p 30 frames per second camera unfortunately it's not an infrared camera that means you cannot log in with windows hello but it is in a good proper position in that top bezel, uh, giving you an ability to use this for Zoom, for Skype, or whatever you need for your work from home needs. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. And this time around, they put a dedicated button that allows you to turn off the webcam. When it's activated, when it's turned off, it turns silver. And I love the fact that this has a dedicated mic mute button that works really well since we're all working from home and we're doing a lot of Zoom and Skype calls. And as I mentioned in my unboxing video, there is a fingerprint scanner that works pretty well, registering my finger each and every time I used it. It's also great for an extra layer of security. Now this being a two-in-one convertible, you can put it into the tent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, watching Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, same can be said for this stand mode. And of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode, great for use with the pen. Now this supports the new pen that HP sells that supports the MPP 2.0 standard. That'll definitely be something similar to the Surface Pro pen. And of course, it also works with the HP pen that I just got with my HP Spectre X360 15 inch that comes in the box. It actually worked pretty well with that pen. Now HP wasn't able to send out that new MPP 2.0 pen, but I hope to get one in the future to test out. So stay tuned. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard. I'm actually a big fan of it. Good key travel, good tactile feedback. I like the way the keys are spaced out, comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It also has a multi-stage backlight, allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment, all working well. And it has a precision touchpad. It's a smooth touchpad. It works really well in terms of responsiveness. As far as two finger scrolling is concerned, it all is buttery smooth and all the Windows 10 gestures are working as advertised. Now, as far as user upgradability is concerned, it's a mixed bag. Now, it's not the easiest to get inside this laptop, but if you do get inside, the RAM will be soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that, but you can upgrade the SSD. So that's good news on that front. And speaking of that SSD, pretty good reads and writes, as you can see from these results. And the other good news is this has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.0. So it's future-proofed going forward. I like to see Wi-Fi 6. I'm happy it's here. And I'm seeing really good range, uploads, downloads, all are good, and it has good connection. Okay, let's talk performance. What we have inside here is the AMD Ryzen 5, the 4500U with integrated Radeon graphics. And I am super impressed with the results. Look at these benchmarks, great for everyday tasks. You could also do gaming on this. Now I found that the best settings are the low settings, 1080p, you could play playable frame rates with Rocket League, GTA 5, Doom 2016, Witcher 3, and many more. So this is a really impressive engineering feat by AMD to put a really good processor, integrated graphics that don't get too hot. And as you can see from these thermals, I was actually really impressed that it didn't get overly hot, not too uncomfortable, even under heavy load. So that's pretty impressive. Now it does have a fan, it will kick in under heavy load, but that's pretty typical of any thin and light laptop. So they did did a really good job in terms of the thermals. And what's really great is that this supports FreeSync. This is not something we normally see on an ultra portable. Now it does have the HP command center that gives you the different thermal profiles. Of course, you could do the HP recommended. You could put it into performance mode. You could put it into quiet mode. It all gives you that ability to change the thermal profiles. And I like that control it gives you. 
Now in the past, these AMD chips were not the best in terms of efficiency when it comes to battery life. This all changes with the AMD Ryzen processors. This AMD Ryzen 5 actually did pretty well. Now this has a 51 watt hour battery. It did 10 hours and 41 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, which is really good. Now if you do need to plug in, the included 65 watt barrel pin connector adapter charges pretty quickly in under two hours to be specific an hour and 48 minutes now the hp Envy x360 sports bottom facing speakers they get pretty loud they have a pretty decent sound to them and i'm pretty impressed with them overall i wasn't expecting good speakers on this and actually that's what you get so good job on that front by hp Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the HP Envy X360 here for 2020? And the answer is a resounding yes. I like its bright, vibrant Full HD display. I like the great performance you're getting out of that AMD Ryzen 5 processor with those integrated graphics. I like the fact that it also supports adaptive sync support for gaming. It's got an upgradable SSD. It's got USB-C charging in addition to having that barrel pin connector charger. And it has really long battery life, impressive speed speakers and it also has a webcam shutter button the negatives here of course is that the ram is not upgradable no thunderbolt 3 no hdmi port and there is no ir camera but there are no real deal breakers here ladies and gentlemen i'm going to give the hp nv x360 a score of 95 percent earning my editor's choice for the 13 inch convertible laptop category making it worth your money so what do you think about this bad boy, the HP Envy X360 with the Ryzen processor? This one has the Ryzen 5. You can get it with the Ryzen 3 or the Ryzen 7, but I like the Ryzen 5 for a couple of reasons. The Ryzen 5 does give you great performance, as you saw by the numbers. It also gives good battery life. It's pretty efficient, and it also runs pretty cool. So in terms of the thermals, I think the Ryzen 5 might be the sweet spot when it comes to these processors. Now, as far as this metal design is concerned, it's really nice. This is the night black color that uh, HP calls it and it's a really nice color gives it a nice dark sleek look but of course this doesn't have a Thunderbolt 3 port as we know because AMD didn't license it from Intel but I think they're waiting for USB 4.0 which will have the same technology which should be coming next year but I've been very impressed with the Ryzen 5 of course battery life is good with this it's got a 51 watt hour battery you're looking at pretty much all day battery life depending on what you're doing with it so it's looking good in that regard uh, as far as performance you can game on this this is the equivalent I think of an MX150 GPU in this That'll kind of give you an idea of sort of gaming and what you can do with this. You could do 1080p video editing. Really very good. This comes in at about $820 as far as the unit that HP sent me. Working really well. I'm super impressed with it. This is definitely my editor's choice for the ultra portable right now. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.